good morning to all of you. My name is Marilyn and Mika. I'd like to start off by thanking each of you for taking the time to participate and join us today. The reason we're here today is to gather opinions and attitudes about issues related to is technology making us less human. I will be asking you a question and then encouraging and moderating our discussions. As we start, I would like to introduce first our panelist. She is from Kabungahan Doya Valete. She is a professional teacher for over 20 years at Sikandara School at PSU Doya Valete. She's the mother of one child and wife of Mr. Jamel Pelayo. Help, ma help me welcome Mrs. Lovely Palampangan Pelayo. Next, she is from a recent Baguio She's been a scientist for over 15 years in international lab chemistry at the Chicago, United States. Help me welcome Miss Marielle Estucar. Next, he is from Liberty or Mock City. He's been a businessman for over 16 years at the Sun, South Korea. Help me welcome Mr. Wendell Chayam. <laughs> Next, she is from Consolation Cebu City. He's been a CEO in his company for over nine years at North Caloocan Metro Manila. He is a father of three children and husband of Mrs. Rendell Sanchez. Help me welcome Mr. Rogerio Sanchez. <laughs> and last but not the least, she is from Kabaliwan, Tacloban City. She's been a professional doctor for over 25 years at Woodlands District Point of in Singapore City. Let's welcome no other than Dr. Krisha Jane Delgado. Well, according to Jane Anthony Matias, leader of citizens and technology lab at Cornell University said, because the world will become no less complex in 2035, society will continue to delegate important decision making to complex system involving bureaucracy, digital record giving, and automated decision rules. In 2035, as in 2022, society will not be asking whether humans are in control, but whether humans are in control. Whether those humans understand the consequences of the system they they operate, whether they do anything to mitigate the harms of their systems, and whether they will be held accountable for failures. So for me, technology can be used for good, but also for escaping evil, because it depends what you mean by technology. Keep in mind, people have been using technology or tools for thousands of years. It is a simple tool that people can use to carry out our work. And now, let's hear opinion from our first panelist, Mrs. Lovely Palampangan Pilayan. Thank you for the pleasant question, Ms. Marilyn Meka, our host for today's discussion. So, it is true that technology making as a new Well, for me, yes, technology is making as a human because now we are increasingly developing on technological devices together. For example, we keep reminders and smartphones and toggle the question for answers. We are observing the activities that require intelligence to technology. Thinking, remembering things, and analyzing are the essential qualities of humans. Too much dependence on technology is making us with humans. Many face-to-face communication are also replaced with virtual interaction. Many people are now living in the virtual home, which is the smartphone. As the need for talking with each other is reducing the ability to communicate with each other, which is a basic quality of living beings, is declining. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful opinion, Mrs. Lovely Palapana Pelayo. Now, let me ask our next panelist for opinion, Ms. Maria Estopar. Thank you, Ms. Marilyn and Mika. So like Ms. Pelayo said, technology is make, making us less human because our decision-making skills are also getting affected as we are now asking search engines to know what is best. We are depending on the knowledge based on the inter of the internet even as even at offices to finish the 
work of art. This affects cognitive skills, the same read, learn, remember, and listen, which is the essential quality of humans. When someone is in trouble, some people are taking videos and pictures instead of helping them. This became a common thing these days. Depending, dependence on the technology is affecting our morality, our system of values and principles that decides which is right and which is wrong. This makes us wonder whether we are turning into machines. Thank you, Ms. Maria Lesipar, for that wonderful opinion. Well, let's share the opinion of Mr. Antonio Sanchez. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Ms. Medinita. Like the other panelists, it is making us less human because science the invention of machines. The value of workers is increasing. They are made to work to support the machines. As a result, work revolves around machines and that human workers are forced to work continuously along with the machines. Industrial zone increased work hours, workers based in human conditions. Humans cannot work and focus continuously like machines. Fast forward to today, we have issues with a device to check how many hours you actually work. Some companies want to be connected with four hours a day through emails and messages. This means people feel less human beings. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. So as, so as you see, each of them have the same opinion. Let me ask Dr. Krisha Jane Delgado for her opinion. Thank you, Ms. Marilyn Mika. So like what Ms. Marilyn Mika said, we have the same opinion because some companies are building strategies to use their apps for a longer time to keep us addicted to their apps and devices so that they can show an advertisement to us. And also, they can use our data to manipulate our discussion for their profits. These strategies are turning humans into just that. People are now engaging in trolling and cyberbullying. Hiding behind devices is going to be the courage to harass other people, which they may not go face to face. This is the deprivation of moral rules. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Trisha for that wonderful opinion. Now, let me ask our last panelist for his opinion, Mr. Wendell Joy. Thank you, Ms. Veronica. So I am against the opinion of the others cause for me. Technology is not making us less human, but maybe it is making us less human because in my opinion, technology people are maintaining and improving relationship with care, friends, family, and relative. Many people are also con connecting with each other to help the needy. And to invite each other to so we have better goals Human connection technology is enabling us to work from
facility is helping employers to be more understanding towards employers many problems are adding elements to force other the help of technology to work and make employers and important technology is just as those how we are us and depends on the on us. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful opinion, Mr. Royal. Well, according to Mr. Randall Royal, technology is not making us less human, and he has a point. All of our panelists has a point because it depends on us and also it was making us less human. As you know, sometimes technology inhibits our ability to have relationships with other people. Each of us have our own opinion about this topic and that was all right. In conclusion, there are more panelists who agree and one panelist who does agree about the topic is technology making us less human. So, technology is a double-edged sword. If we allow, it may turn us into slaves. It's up to us to not let it make us feel less human. Technology is just a tool, and we need to trust our abilities more than machines. In the developed countries, people are asking for the right to disconnect so that they can keep their mind off the board. Companies are now adding elements to work culture to make employees feel important. This is a progressive thing and a step toward deciding a world where people comes first. Before I end this discussion, let me ask a question. Who wants to answer? Yes, Ms. Andara, here's the question. Again, here's the question. Is technology really making us less human? It depends on us because sometimes technology needs our ability to have relationships, relationships or communicate with other people. Thank you for that wonderful and pleasant answer, Ms. Andara Ramon. Once again, a round of applause for our dear panelists. Thank you for coming today and talking about this. Your comments have given us lots of different ways to see this issue. Thank you for your time and also all of you who listened to our discussion. Today, especially to our English teacher, Ms. Abby Bande. Again, thank you.